Have you ever found yourself surfing through channels or scrolling through a streaming service trying to find a movie to watch, but then after a little while you, you get kind of bored not really finding anything that's just sticking out to your liking, so you settle on something that you've seen before probably many, many times. You've already seen whatever it is you're clicking on quite a few times. That is something that I do quite often. So the point of this video is kind of exploring this idea of breaking your own habits. Like one, exploring the idea of the habits in general, of like sticking with familiarity with stuff that we've seen before and why it's difficult to branch out into something else. I can kind of walk you through my own process from my perspective on how I deal with this. And then maybe you guys can tell me how you deal with this kind of a thing down in the comments below. It seems like we're in a time where people now especially don't want to branch out into other things. They want to stick with things that they're a little more familiar with, that they're a little more comfortable with, whether they recognize someone in it or a character that's in it or the title that it's connected to from a different franchise. You know, of course, we have Star Wars, Marvel, the endless amount of sequels and reboots, continuations, spinoffs, whatever you want to call it, with all these different things that are trying to continue and build off of each other, build off of a name of some kind and a title. And that seems to be what Hollywood is pushing for the most to make because they seem to get the most return. However, there are loads of people that are clamoring for something new or something original to be put together so they can finally watch something different for a change and there has been some stuff like that that has come out in the recent years though i'd say that of course their percentage is far less than the ones that the majority of us have ended up seeing but that's got me thinking big time about like familiarity and why we stick with that and why it's difficult to pick something new and then also just why we're drawn to similar things. So it's like, obviously, if you've seen something before, you know whether or not you liked it and you know the characters with it. Or maybe if you've seen something and you watched it once, you did get some things out of it, but sometimes with multiple viewings, you can understand or catch more that's with it. And those are some aspects that make watching movies, again, kind of fun when you watch them on repeat. But sometimes, you know, I like to have something on that I'm familiar with while I can do something else mostly for multitasking purposes because i can have something on and be doing something else and then you know i don't have to be watching it to know what's happening in my head i'm not even if i'm not really thinking about it i know what's happening and if i want to look up i can look up and there it is and then just go back to my stuff whatever i'm doing and that's typically why i pick something that's familiar but also with people that know me very well, you know that I am wanting to be a movie director someday and that I have a long way to catch up on films that I have not seen yet, especially a lot of older films that I have not seen yet. And <laughs> it's like, I forget who, but there's a couple of different people that make a lot of jokes with me where, oh yeah, Rook's the kind of guy that'll watch the same movie 30 times without watching any of the recommended movies we want him to watch once. And that's kind of true. But it's not because I don't want to. I mean, I have watched quite a few movies in the last couple of years, but I guess in comparison to the amount of movies most people tend to watch, I have barely watched anything. And after having watched a good 40 films that were recommended, like there was a few of them that I kind of didn't really get that much from watching. Citizen Kane, I watched it, and it's off of my list of movies to watch now, but I only watched that because... It was like just so recommended that I watch it if I want to have anything to do with film. And I feel like I didn't gain anything from watching that film. I understand its importance and I can see that from its time, you know, it set all these grounds, I suppose. But from just the present, there wasn't much that I can gain from that other than maybe just some subtle bits of how people used to be able to act back then compared to now like the difference in atmosphere maybe and the way they wanted to portray some characters and emotions a little bit different but other than that like i didn't really get much from it so like when there's other things that are new or whatever i mean you look, you look at the cover you look at the title you look at who's in it you look at maybe who directed it you're looking for all these things that can get you interested and wanting to see it. It's something that is not in your 
view right now and you're trying you know the movie wants you to watch it this just pretend the movie is real it's like it wants you to watch it so look at the cover look at who's in it look at who's making it all these different reasons and it's like oh do you want to see it and at most if you are you know not convinced quite yet but you want to get more information well then let's look up a trailer and see what it looks like and hopefully it doesn't spoil everything but hopefully it gives you enough to get you to want to go and see it mm -hmm. And I just in that alone, too, just right there before going further, that alone is interesting because like I'm one who does not like to be spoiled very much when I watch things. But we are we seem to be in a time where a lot of people kind of want to be spoiled on the movie before they see it. Like they want to know a lot of the main important beats that's going to happen and like where the story is going to change a little bit. And so that when they go in the theater, they can have whatever comfortability being expected and then have that happen it's like okay good and then you see the journey like you know where they get at the end and then you're gonna go see the journey and what happens which i can sort of see that as a somewhat of a good reason to do that but i personally would rather have a trailer that is able to present an idea for some part of a story and get me enticed and go and watch it but I have I have been duped a few times in trailers to think that something's going to be really cool, but then it isn't. But then it's like, well, what's the nature of a trailer? And the trailer did what it, it's supposed to. It showed some footage from the film and tried to present it in a certain way and try to get you to go and see it watching. So let me bring it back a bit to the point about trying to break the mold of your habits. So the reason why I brought up all this different stuff is that I end up going for something familiar after a little while. And then on occasion, I will pick something new and I will give it a chance and see how well it does. Uh, there's Batman that came out. I don't personally care about Batman, but that is something popular that people around me like to discuss. And there's been a lot of Batman around for so long that I am familiar with it without being very invested in the character. And therefore, when I went to see the movie, it was kind of like a, I guess you could call it like a low risk kind of a film. But then there's something like Pig that has Nicolas Cage in it. And the only reason why I saw that was because Black Angus Reviews saw a review from Red Letter Media about it and it has Nicolas Cage in it. And so that interested me. I'm like, okay, I want to see that as well. And it's like an independent film and it's a very different type of film for Nicolas Cage to be in. And I really liked it. And its tone is something that I normally don't really watch like i'm okay with that kind of tone but i'm not usually looking when i'm browsing when i'm browsing i'm not looking to be in a somber mood i'm not looking to like feel bad or to get so emotionally invested into the character in that kind of a way it's like oh man so when i saw it though i i was really glad that i saw it and i would probably watch it again at some point soon here i don't know it's been now i'll wait till it's about almost a year maybe and i'll watch it again that's probably like in august <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I th in a way, I would call that like a subversion of what you want, and you get something that you still enjoy. I don't, I don't know if that's the right way to phrase this because the word subversion has totally been, you know, blown out of proportion these days. Thank you, Ryan Johnson. <clears throat> then okay you would think that film successfully got me in i liked that movie but honestly it, if nicholas cage wasn't in this film i probably wouldn't have seen it if, if he were to suggest it oh yeah red letter media said this movie pig Let, let's watch it it's you know this dramatic tale and however he would describe it i probably would be like mm, i don't know but the thread that got me to watch it was nicholas cage and now that's interesting because for me, I actually don't look at films as in like, you know, oh, is there somebody that I recognize and then I will watch them because they're in it? That's not typically how I watch movies, though. If there is somebody that seems to pop up in a weird film, I might want to check it out. But that's not what I actively look for. And so I find that interesting because I know a lot of people that look for films based on directors and based on, you know, what maybe a studio that's making it or if certain actors are in it as well, certain writers and and then we look at the trailers the covers and the reason why i listed all those things before is because it seems to be an aspect of how we search for films but regardless regardless when we're browsing for movies and shows and stuff at least for me <laughs> like rarely do i pick something new just sometimes i do sometimes i do but only sometimes i get cobra kai 
is something that I'm familiar with and as far as Karate Kid. And I saw that within the last couple of years for the first time. So that was like, boom, and there's more. Hell yeah. Let me see this stuff. Breaking Bad. Like Black Angus Reviews wanted me to watch Breaking Bad. That was actually that was our trade. I got him to watch the Karate Kid for the first time as well for him because he did not want to watch it. He he thought everybody that talks about it is crazy. So I got him to watch Karate Kid, and in exchange, I'm supposed to watch Breaking Bad at some point. But my interest to watch Breaking Bad is so low, even though I know the actor in it is great. I've seen him in other stuff that I like. I, I watched Malcolm in the Middle all the time. Man, I love that guy. And based on how everybody talks about this show, it should be great. But just, I, I don't know, With part of the, I guess, the amount of people that like it has me skeptical <laughs> in a way. Because everybody, I think it's because everybody, like, hyped up Game of Thrones for years. And, but I never watched it. And then season eight comes around. And then it's, like, the worst show ever now. And, like, ever since then. I'm skeptical when people give me these types of recommendations, but like, what else is there? What else could it do to convince me to watch it? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> I feel like I'm starting to ramble at this point with this. The whole point was about breaking the mold. And I guess to round out my point here, recently I've been watching a lot of fan films and those are like very short, indigestible types of things to watch and again with them being a fan film they're about something that i'm somewhat familiar with but watching a new story told with that as the skin that they're trying to tell their story with and i am liking quite a few of them even the ones that are bad i'm glad that i've watched them and in a way i'm hoping that this will get me to be more open to checking out more independent films i don't actively sh i don't actively search for independent films. We get pushed a lot of what's marketed to us. That's the thing. We get marketed a lot of things, but you know, th and that seems to be what the majority of us will end up seeing. At least the majority of people in general will see what's marketed to them, but they won't actively go and look for things that are outside of that and give it a chance because it's not as familiar. And when I say that, I'm referring to the like general audience, though I would think that a lot of the people that are into film do actively search for the hard to find ones or look to YouTube channels that find them for them so that they can also give that a chance to check something out. Like Your Movie Sucks, YMS, he seems to have quite a few different types of suggestions. Red Letter Media looks at different little gems here and there that might be worth a fun watch and... It's all about giving it that try, though. But this is the thing, too. That's like a reliance on somebody familiar giving you a recommendation to try something. And maybe it's because, you know, we have limited time in life in general. So it's like you really don't want to waste your time on something that you'll end up being dissatisfied with. And because there's a difference between like maybe not enjoying something and then just being like utterly dissatisfied by it. Because there can be bad films that are entertaining, but there can be bad films that just drain you, that drain your life force. And that might be what a lot of us worry about when we do our scrolls and our surfing. But let me know what you guys think about this. Maybe you have a more well-rounded perception of what I'm talking about. <laughs> and maybe there's been a study on this. Maybe there's been a lot more to this. This is the kind of thing that I am writing down to do further research on in the future, but right now I don't know that much about it. I'm trying to find different things to focus on and knock out, and so I'm just kind of broaching the idea of this concept right now, but just because I've actually just been thinking about that because I'm looking for things to watch and there should be plenty for me to watch, but then I just kind of pick something like Ferris Bueller or Tremors or you know, just you know, something familiar with me that I've seen before. Spartacus, Stargate, here. It's like I've seen these things. Why am I watching them again? It's just that comfortability. I don't know. But with that, I'll see you guys later.